Marhaban. My name is Ian Campbell, and this series of five videos is the fourth series in a whole set of videos explaining the basics of how to speak, read, and write al fusha or Modern Standard Arabic. These five videos will explore what we call the idafa in Arabic. This is how we link nouns together in relationships of possession. It's easy to use, but works backwards from English, so take some getting used to. This third video will show how to use idafas in sentences, which is quite straightforward. The trick is to consider the idafa as being one group of words that can't be separated instead of separate words. Think of it as two Legos glued together. You can't tear them apart. You got to build something with it. And once you do this, using them in sentences is really quite easy. So you can use an idafa as the mubtada of a sentence in place of just a definite noun or phrase. This is both very common and quite easy to do. So I can say ibn ammi talib. So ibn, son, looks indefinite, but is definite because it belongs to Ammi, my uncle, my paternal uncle, which has a domir or possessive pronoun on the end, making it definite. So definite, definite, indefinite tells us that here is where the is, am, or are goes. So the son of my paternal uncle is a fancy way of saying my cousin, because we have to be more specific in Arabic. What about him? He's a student. Proper names are going to be your, one of your biggest bugaboos in basic Arabic because so many proper names, especially men's names, have everyday meanings in the language. So Samir, for example, Samir is a man's name, but it can also mean like brown-skinned or tan-skinned. It's a common word. So Zaujat Samir, Samir's wife, um, it's not going to be always obvious to you at the beginning that this is someone's name. You're going to look at this string of words and think indefinite, indefinite, indefinite. Wait, where do we get definite? And the answer is because it's a man's name, because it's a person's name, it's a proper name and therefore definite. And that makes these two words an idafa. So there's no real way around this. I wish I could give you the magic rule for knowing when it's a name, but I can't. Too many names are everyday meaning words in the language, and so you just kind of have to roll with it and gradually learn the common names so that you don't get tripped up by stuff like this. So Zaujet Samir, the wife of Samir, and then we go indefinite. So here's where our is goes. What about her? She's a good woman, Imra'a Toyiba, and we mean good of character. Toyib can also mean tasty or delicious, but we're so not going there. Here it's easier because the Toyiba has Alif Lem on it, so it's a lot more obvious where the first half of the sentence stops and the second one begins. So Zaujata Toyiba, this is a female student who has a wife. What about her? Toyiba Oidon. Arabic loves to do this, put two very closely related words together in a way that seems kind of cheesy in English, but it's elegant and poetic in Arabic. So, Zaujata Toliba Toliba Aidan, the student's wife, is also a student. The word Aidan for also has the tenween al fath ending, which is two fathas, but it's pronounced an and for historical reasons needs an extra unpronounced alif on the end. You'll mostly see it written without the tanween al-fath, but the extra alif is always going to be there. So it will look like aida, but it's not, it's aidan, like that. And it means also, or T-O-O, too. So it's very useful, which is why it's blue here, so add it to your vocabulary. In the same way that you can use it as the mubtada of the sentence, you can use an idafa as the khabar of the sentence, and this is also pretty easy to deal with. So, dhalik ashab, that guy, we have to say dhalik ashab, because if we took off the alif lem and said dhalik shab, it would mean that is a guy, which isn't what we're trying to say here. And then we get to ibn khaliha, the son of her maternal uncle, or her cousin. Now, all four of these words are definite. Valik, because it's a demonstrative, this, that, these, those. Ashab, bisabab alif lem. Ibn, because it belongs to khaliha. And khaliha, bisabab ad-domir, because of the pronoun. So they're all definite. So it might not be super obvious for a real beginner to sort out what's happening here. But here, this word looks indefinite, and that's good enough for sentence purposes. So 
definite, definite, secretly definite, but looks indefinite. So here's where our is, am, or are goes. So we have that guy is her cousin. Same thing over here. Had the tolib, this the student, or this the student. And then here's another man's first name, Muhammad. But it's so common that you'll learn it really quickly. And then Habib. Habib means beloved, so boyfriend, girlfriend. It can be a gender neutral word here, but we've already established that it's a male student, so Muhammad's boyfriend. Habib is definite because he belongs to Muhammad, and he doesn't belong to Muhammad. This is an equal relationship here, but he looks indefinite, and that's how we know where to put the divider in the sentence. So, had the Talib Habib Muhammad. This student is the Habib of Muhammad or Muhammad's boyfriend. None of this is really rocket science. I'm just giving you some basic examples of it so you see it and what you might get tripped up on. The really tricky part is when you have an indefinite adjective after the idafa. And the rule that you need to remember is the adjective, when the adjective is indefinite, it modifies the first word of the idafa and not the others. Normally now you're used to seeing noun and then adjective, but here we're going to have noun and then another noun or maybe more than one other noun and then the adjective. So it might trip you up at first. So remember this rule. Sometimes it's going to be obvious which noun the adjective is modifying because of something like gender. So hafid is a new word, grandson. Ustedatina, our professor, who is a woman, because this used to be a ta marbuta, but when we put the suffix on it, we changed it back to regular ta. And then veki for smart. So masculine, feminine, masculine, it should be pretty evident here that veki modifies the hafid, not the professor. The professor may well be smart, most professors aren't, including me, but she's a woman and the adjective is masculine, so it needs to refer to the hafid. Same thing over here. So, shakat, apartment, at-talib, the apartment of the talib, or the student's apartment or flat. Jamila, beautiful or pretty. Here we have feminine, masculine, feminine. So, it's easy to tell that however attractive the student may be, we think that their apartment is, we think that his apartment is beautiful. Same thing over here. Hafidat Ahmed. Ahmed is a man's first name, again, a pretty common one. Hafidat Ahmed, the granddaughter of Ahmed. Tawila. Well, Tawila is feminine singular, so the granddaughter is tall. Ahmed, we don't know. He wears flat, he wears lifts in his shoes. No idea. All right. However, sometimes they're all the same gender, and it can be a little bit ambiguous. So remember the rule. When we have an indefinite adjective after the idafa, the adjective modifies the first word of the idafa, not the others. So, hafidat ustavatina vekia. So, they're all feminine here. So, it's unclear if you don't know the rule, whether it's the granddaughter or the professor who is smart. But the rule tells us it's the granddaughter who's smart. So, our professor's granddaughter is smart. Same thing here, only they're all muzakkar or masculine. Beit talib jamil. So is it the student who's beautiful? Maybe, but we're talking about the house because the rule tells us the indefinite adjective refers to the first word. So the house of the student or the student's house, what about it? It's beautiful. Same thing over here. Now it's Ahmed's grandson. So they're all masculine, but the rule applies. It's the first word not the others. So it's the grandson here, and we don't know anything about Ahmed. Maybe he played in the NBA back in the day. No idea. All right, so that's really the basics of how to use idafas in sentences. It's really not very difficult, except for this tricky little rule that you'll internalize pretty quickly. However, I'm going to add a couple of not super relevant details about idafas, because otherwise this video would be way shorter than the others. So I'll catch you up on these here. One of them, and this is one of those things like the case markings where it's not super important at, that you know this at your level, but it'll come in handy later on, is when non-final words end with the human plural endings un or in, those endings lose their noons but keep the long vowels. So let me show you by example here. A mudarris is a teacher. So dars is a lesson, madrasa is school. 
the del racin root means to study. So the mudarris is kind of literally the one who's making you study, therefore a teacher. So al mudarris a Sudani, the Sudanese teacher, veki. So here's a simple sentence, definite, definite, indefinite. The Sudanese teacher is smart. Here we have just a noun adjective phrase, but it's plural this time, human plural. Al mudarrisun a Sudaniun. So the Sudanese teachers. But if we make mudarrisun a part of an itofa, then it's going to lose its noon and it's going to look a little weird at first. This is actually useful because it's a dead giveaway, something's going on. So al madrasa is the school, and again, Arabic loves to put words from the same root next to each other, it sounds classy. So instead of mudarrisun al madrasa the teachers of the school or the school's teachers we have to say mudarisu it loses its noon mudarisu al madrasa and then adkiya is the human plural of vaki so this looks a little weird but is actually kind of a useful cue that something's going on and you'll put it into practice later on as you get better and better about this and then one other little not super relevant detail is that when a word with the human plural ending un is a non-first word in an idafa, it always has to change to in. So in colloquial Arabic and spoken Arabic, it's always in and never un, so this is a little easier. So the same rule as above applies if it's also a non-final word. If it's in the middle of an idafa, it will lose its noon as well. So again, I'll show you this through example. So, al muhandasun al adkiya, the smart teachers. So, human plural, human plural, they're both definite. It's a phrase, not a sentence that I said teachers, and I meant engineers, excuse me, it's very late in the day. Muhandasun al adkiya, the smart engineers. Now we have astika. Astika is the human plural of sadiq, for friend. If you said sadiqun, everybody would get it but it's astika. So astika now because muhandasun is a non-first word in the idafa, it has to become muhandasin. So astika al-muhandasin. Most native speakers will say muhandasin all the time. So this isn't really all that important, but it's useful to know at some point. And now we're gonna make a sentence. We're gonna say maktab, the office, Muhandasin, because it's now a non-first word in an idafa, but it's also a non-final word in an idafa, so it's going to lose its noon. So, Muhandasi, a sharika, sharika is a useful word, company or corporation. Kebir, so indefinite adjective. So, the office of the engineers of the company or the office of the company's engineers, what about it? It's big, and this video's not, because that's really all I've got in this. In the next one, I'll be talking about how to use idafas in phrases, which has an additional wrinkle that makes it trickier. But for now, I'm going to say, ma